I, I dare say they do, John. We'll see what they do go with this fourth pickup now for Ragdoll. I mean, we haven't seen the mid and the safe lane yet. So maybe you go down that safe lane route now that you know you are up against the Wraith King. Uh, you do have heroes that are kind of not very popular right now, like the PL, if you wanted to go into that, just for that, just to be a nuisance. But you've already kind of got the line with the Mana Drain anyway, which can be quite frustrating. Uh, instead, they go down the safer route, a bit more of a meta hero in the Medusa. Uh, and I'd say it does fairly well uh, into the Wraith King. Uh, Wraith King naturally needs to, to close the gap to actually get anything done against Dusa. Uh, and that's not going to be so easy uh, into, the, into the draft of Ragdoll. Though I might add, John, you do have some, some nice mana drain there with the, with the Bane Fiends grip. I mean, you do tend to drain 5% per second, but it's easier said than done. Like, against the Grimstroke, against the Lion, it, it, in, against the Mars even, it's very hard to hold that Fiends grip for a long duration. We'll see how it all pans out, but I, I am liking where Ragdoll's going with this draft. Yeah, it fits into what we know VT Faded likes to do in his past one. He loves to just farm up, like... In fact, I think most of his heroes in the DPC has been Terrorblade or Drow, with the occasional Sven thrown in. So we haven't seen much of his Deuce in this uh, DPC, but it's something we've seen him play again in different tournaments like QHE Esports. Plays into that farming style he loves, can flash farm really fast. I do feel like the Raid King can kind of keep a pace there though, as we've seen the Skeletons just work through the camps very fast as well. So I don't think Gabby's going to lag too far behind. But the Medusa should be able to scale a little bit better. Wraith King scaling to the late game is awkward. Like there's a mid game spike which kind of peaks and going towards the ultra late game, it kind of stagnates until you maybe get like a Divine and Ags combination, which is super late game. Yeah. So there's some there's some timing issues for Talon, but it's not too drastic. I think uh, what they do need to worry about is the team fight possibilities because Ragdoll has the Arena Stone Gaze combination. Right. right, so you can go Arena, you can go Stone Gaze, you have great AoE control from two heroes, and even your supports have really good AoE control with a Soul Bind and again, combinations on your line. Whereas for Talon, it's all down to the Pangolier, it's all down to that Rolling Thunder, the kind of setup, the buy space for the Bane to grip. It's not a very easy game for the Bane to get a good grip off just because there's not much to set up for it, not much to really buy time outside of a good roll and maybe a good silence from the DP. Oh, fair enough, John. I'm currently wondering right now as well with this draft, I mean, do you think the DP is going mid? Because if you're Ragdoll right now, you you might assume it's a DP mid and you'll kind of draft into that. I, I suppose offlane DP is still a thing as well. You could go down that route. Uh, no KP does enjoy running that if he needs to. In fact, it could just be the offlane DP if they want to flex it here. But Talon, they're going to have to reveal their own pick first. So I guess my question doesn't even matter anyway. So Ragdoll will find out before they have to make their final pickup. Is there any mid pickups in particular that kind of strike your interest here, Jonathan? Anything really good in your in your eyes? You want something that plays with the pace of something the DP brings. So if we're assuming DP is not mid, something fast paced on mid, something that can just join in these early fights would be great. They already ban out, say, the Luna and Quap. Maybe something like a Puck could give you that AoE control that's necessary. You know, having the Dream Foil plus Rolling Thunder is pretty darn strong. It's very slippery. Ragdoll does have the line to kind of hold him back, but that could work. They go with the Ember instead, which is still moderately fast paced. And it is something we know Mikado excels at. So the timing there is still pretty fast. Orb of Corrosion into Javelin or Phase Boots, and you tend to just run and gun. And that could give talent to reach they need it, it gives some follow through for the pangoliers rolling thunder and it can just kind of hold the mid lane steady no matter what ragdoll picks up so it's looking clear that we will have the ember raid king as cores i think they're gonna go with a kp pangolier just because that's something kp is really comfy on and right. maybe run a high dp but again that's that's really flexible you could still run pangolier for off lane dp depending on what they want boat heroes are very familiar to both Hyde and KP, so they still have some of that flex going into the last pick of Ragdoll here. Yeah, I was leaning the other way. I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that you did say it could literally be either way, but I, I do think it might be a POS4 Pango, and I think I'd prefer the POS3 DP here, but I, I guess we'll wait and see. I mean, either way, I, I don't really see them being able to slow down the, the Deusa too much throughout the laning stage. It is going to be all about infiltrating that jungle, though, and just taking Tao's ASAP. Uh, and with with the DP, naturally, you are going to have quite a bit of pull, quite a bit of push early on. But a Necrophos Whoa. comes out, very very spicy oh. ending here for Ragdoll. What are you thinking, Jonathan? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it good? Is it bad? What's going on? Um, it's 
Necrofo is mid against Ember. I, I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah. I'm gonna try to think about Crest, our resident Necrofo spammer, Mr. Rank 200. I don't know if he'd feel good about it. I guess on paper it's not bad. Because you can just spam, you know, you just do Necrophos things, focus in on the last hits. It's very hard to trade against a Necrophos just because you have so much regen on hand. I think that's something Mikado's going to have to watch out for. At the same time, Mikado can just play with a Flame Guard. It's, it's hard for Necrophos to burn that down. You can just run down, maybe get a value point in Chains and try to burn Citrus away. So there is that. But down the line, this is where it's a bit spicy, Mike. You've got double Reaper Sight with Soulbind. You've got two tanky, three tanky heroes with Necrophos, Medusa, and Mars. You don't have the best burst on Talon. So there's a lot of ways for Ragdoll to kind of work that out. And I think that makes it a lot interesting. I, I'm not going to give a draft advantage to either side. I think there's a way for both sides to play. Hmm. But I will say I'm much more excited by Ragdoll running a mid Necrophos. I mean, how often do you see that nowadays? Not so often. Not so often. And what you also don't see so often is an NF NFT opportunity like this. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your screenshots right now. Get those NFTs going for John X Fire. You can post as many as you want. We don't care. John loves <laughs> NFTs. Uh, naturally, he'd love his face to be on as many NFTs that aren't authorized <sighs> by him as possible. But with that, we are going to end into game number one between Talon and Ragdoll. Oh, see how this one does pan out between these two teams. And again, for the viewers that didn't hear us earlier, this is going to be essentially the first series that we do have with Talon in the game house together as five. So we'll see how much of a difference it does make, whether it does make a difference at all. Uh, I imagine it should have some kind of influence. Yeah, it's again, it allows them to work on that team cohesion that we've been saying has been a bit rocky since the inception of the team because, well, they haven't really had much time and they haven't had interaction with each other. And the original stack was... Gabby, Mikato, Hyde, Death, and Ponlo. And well, obviously, Ponlo went to NA. Death's not on the team. They have Fly, and KP. So, that long time where they were formed up does um, kind of go away. The three players are still familiar with each other. They're still kind of jiving, especially with Fly. Hopefully, all this time in Southeast Asia, all the pubs he's played has also kind of made it more familiar to him how Southeast Asian players play. As there was a, a bit of a, I want to say, same-ish drafts coming out early on from town, especially in this open qualifier. So we'll see. See everyone's in high spirits. Tips out to Gabby already. Well, John, I'm getting information from our admin that they're not in a team house together. They're just in the same country now. So who, oh, who's, who's well, lying to me, John? Are you lying or is the admin lying? Well, as far as I know, they're all together. They could, I mean, last time I talked to Hi, they were in quarantine. Right. So it's, it's possible that they're still in the hotels, which would be worrying to me because I've heard Gabby complain about his internet. So, can you, we'll can you give us a, a ping test, John? Can you? I'd rather not because I'm streaming the, the games right now. Could you get us some pings going? How is it? Is he stable? It looks like everyone's stable on uh, what, what I can see. At least all the players are within, yeah, within like less than 50 MS. So looks like it's good, Mike. Looks like it's good. Hopefully that holds up. No excuses Less than Gabby, 50, then. I'd say that's pretty good. No excuses, Gabby. See how he does. I mean, he is playing a, a one button hero essentially, right? So he should be just one fine. Button. Mike, there are two buttons now. That, there, that is true. In, in the Vampiric Spirit, it's two buttons. And props to the guy at Valve or whoever it was that came up with this this taunt, the coffin dance, essentially. Very, very nice there on the Wraith King. I, I did appreciate that when that first came out. I was very happy to see it. <laughs> if only they could play the actual music as well. Could you imagine that? Just oh, meme music blasting your game? It'd be amazing. Go on, Gabby. Do it one more time. Uh, I'm in this showcase cool now. Man. Johnny's not doing it. Is it on? There's a oh, cooldown. There's After a cooldown. After like two times, it goes on a minute cooldown. It's so sad. That's the one joy I had, you know, I, I picked something like Kunkka before. I used to pick pause for Kunkka just to taunt. That's it, just to do that jig. And now I can't do it. I have no joy in my life left, Mike. There's no happiness here. Right. I imagine the players are quite upset too, because it seems like they just want to keep their APM going with the, uh, with the taunts, but... <laughs> I mean, they can still press the button, I guess. You've got that going. You can press the button as much as you want. Just, uh, now they get annoyed and not us. Fly. Oh, he's going to try and protect that Observer Ward mid, but that's going to go down. Nice little support play there from Ragdoll as well, Yiffin. Well, naturally, of course. Who Who is that on the line, John? Menu P. Menu, menu P. P. That's right. It's Menu. Yes. Of course it is. Well, Fly is going to chase down YIF. Bit of damage here from the Bane, and oh, the Bane 
pretty famous for those right clicks. Just so much damage being able to be dealt out here by Fly. Might even get one more hidden before he... No, never mind. He gets out of there just fine. But we will start with the bot lane, Jonathan. Of course, you've got GY there against Gabby. And you've got the support of Fly. And naturally, Yif here on the Grimstroke. Uh, it does seem like it's going to be a rather annoying lane here for Ragdolls. It, it doesn't feel like you're going to be able to necessarily break the gap on Gabby, especially while Fly's around. Uh, but assuming you can maybe deal with Fly, perhaps you could start to pressure Gabby a little bit. Apart from that, though, it does feel like uh, GY, he's probably just going to be very focused and, and trying to deny as many creeps as possible. Yeah, it's a kill lane for both sides. There's a lot of possibilities for Fly and Gabby at the same time for GY and Yif. I think the timing for Ragdoll is going to be level 3, which you can get level 2 Spear or level 2 God's Rebuke along with the Inkswell going. And that's when you can probably look at Fly. You do have to watch out for the Nightmare saves on the Bane. And that's where the Bleeding Edge comes in for Talon. Otherwise, going to be pretty static. Like Both sides going to focus in on that farm. As you mentioned, Gabby, once he does have a few more uh, points in that Vampiric Spirit, can also start clearing out those camps. And once you can get that done, that's where the early form for Raid King really starts to rack up. And that's the time yeah. you want in the Raid King. Go into that armlet, start running around with added oh, HP, good. added attack speed, and start melting some faces. Ooh, that, we'll have a look at the other lanes as well, John. Of course, you've got Citrus here against Makoto. And this is a very interesting matchup. And I know you pointed this out already during the, uh, the drafting phase. But Necrophos into Ember. From a from a just just a glance, it does feel like it should favor Citrus on the Necrophos, but do you think it could possibly go the other way and maybe Makoto outplays him here on the Ember? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a bit more even than you'd expect. It would still favor Necrophos overall, just because Death Pulse heals you and does damage. You can burn through early levels of the Flame Guard, not much block there for Mikado early on. And of course, with a Heartstopper aura and passive, you can just kind of passively regen up safely as well it's it's not a bottle lane necessarily for citrus and it does look like he is going for the wand into double null which is pretty much all you need for the man to stay in and just focusing on the right clicks to get that cs up mikado does have a little bit more burst up you know with the level two flame guard up it's a bit harder for citrus to melt through that wave clear of mikado oh, and if he did have a value point in the searing chains that might have been a kill May have been indeed. Citrus now going to try and give it back the way of Makoto. And I, I suppose every time that Flame Guard's off cooldown is about when you've got to try and get aggressive here as Makoto. See if you can get this water rune as you do have Menu Ping moving in to try and deny it off, but he's a little bit late. So Makoto, he'll be able to get away with that. And well, had he not gotten that bottle refill, that would have been very problematic, I think, for Makoto. But well, at least for now, he's going to be just fine. And of course, speaking of Menu Ping, it's going to be him along with their Medusa, of course, VT faded against KP and the lovely hide on this Pangolier. This laning phase, John, it does feel like a very kind of even trading lane between the two. Do you think it favors one team or the other? Not necessarily. It, it's just focused in on that farm. There is a little bit more aggression coming out from Hyde and KP if they can find the angle to get a good shield crash into the Spirit Siphon. A pretty good amount of slows at the least to play with and try to run down. But we're at the point where VT Fade is at level 3. Level 2 Mystic Snake mana is not going to be an issue for the Dusa. Oh, well, not too much of an issue as you can just Mystic Snake and kind of heal back up and get the shield ready. Menyo Ping is doing a fantastic job of zoning out Haido and that's really preventing the Pangolier from playing forward. As a support, with a shield crash, you just want to run up to the core, get the shield crash going, get a couple of right clicks and back off. But Hyde's having to play a lot more passively, which is kind of impacting that early pacing from Talon. It, it's not the breaking point of the lane, but it's certainly not the way you want it to go for Talon early on. Jeez, Makoto again mid lane, John. I, I just can't help but look back as... Well, we saw him getting aggressive onto Citrus, but this time he takes so much damage back. Mind you, they, they do have those water runes spawning up in about 15 seconds, and I think Makoto is kind of relying on being able to secure another one for himself. Does also have that bounty to go back to if he does need. I haven't seen Menu Pink. No, never mind. He does TP into the mid tier one. This time around, he is dead set on making sure it does get denied off. He will be able to take it for himself. Same thing happening down on the bot side, though. Fly will be the one to surely take it as he will. Won't let Citrus take it himself, and looks like Makoto is going to go back for the uh, the bounty rune instead. And of course, Hyde was around stacking. In Anyway, and just gives him a salve over as now Citrus wants to get a little bit cheeky. Taking stacks away from Makoto, but Makoto, he'll go for a fight for this. Hyde's gonna move in. Earth Spike does stun him up, but a great swashbuckle out from Hyde. And now Citrus is in big, big trouble as they get that level up with the chains out of Makoto. Citrus still trying to get himself out, but Hyde able to secure the kill on the Pango. 
great pick up there for Talon. Yeah, pretty greedy play coming out from Citrus, just playing a bit too far forward, not respecting the early damage output coming through from Hyde and from Mikado. They've got good physical coming out. I mean, just the Blightstone on Mikado really enables the right-click harassment coming through from Hyde, and that is something you have to worry for. He was about a microsecond away from Deathfalls being back up, which might have bought him enough time to look for the kill turnaround onto Hyde, just not enough HP to go around. So heads-up play from Talon, good punishment coming out, and because Menu Ping was down mid, uh, helping out there, VT Faded is receiving a little bit more pressure top. He's still getting some good CS in, despite being solo in the lane. Again, he's level 5, he's very well protected now on the Dusa, but this is giving more breeding room for Talon to kind of get their cores going on the offlane as well. And you've got to love what Hyde's doing, John, the Pango. Like, we, we talked about the Dusa and the reliability of having to go into the jungle and relying on that kind of farm, but you see Hyde just roaming that dire jungle, finding out if there's any stacks being made for VT Faded and Orangdol. Yeah, they have kind of considered this already and haven't stacked up anything for VT Faded in that left side jungle of the Dire. I think you are more reliant on just kind of committing to that triangle instead as bot lane. Yif was in trouble, but Fly, he'll be the one to drop on the Bane as they do punish. That'll be the first kill coming up for Ragdoll now. It's an easy pick off coming here for the side of Ragdoll. Fly just going for... Maybe a bit of a reset there. Did you manage to get a good spear off? And GY is still you know, just focusing in on that farm. Gabby has had a pretty free lane as well. Not as free as the Deuce so far, but we're reaching that point where the farm can escalate. You've got the skeletons leveled up to three, almost at six, so you're going to have the value point in reincarnation if need be for protection. And I think overall for Ragdoll, this lane didn't quite go off as they'd want to. Again, they've had that doubled stun lane with the ink swell, with the spear ready to go if they wanted so to, but nice. it feels like they just haven't been able to capitalize on that, and that's great news for Gabby. He can play the slower game, he can build into the armlet, go into the face boots and desolate and run. This could be a... Ooh, no, it's not gonna be problematic. KP, he hasn't seen Yif on the Grimstroke, but it won't matter. It's Ragdoll, they don't really have a, a great way of breaking the gap with the Inkswall just to stun up KP on this, uh, on this DP, so he's gonna be just fine. In fact, they've rotated more up now, Fly's shown up on the Bane, and it does seem like they are ready to try and commit for this top tier 1 tower. Well, we've said this a few times, but these towers are going to be very important for Talon to get early on with this DP. Otherwise, you're going to be giving plenty of space away for to VT Faded, but they do move in now. Fly does get spotted out, but they won't actually be able to fully commit to this Bane. In fact, Fly is so confident, he will just keep moving forward. And Ragdoll, they don't dare go near the Bane and try to contest. Just playing it safe. They, I, I think seeing Fly up there signals that Talon has more heroes at the back. It's about that time where you commit for that tier 1 tower. So KP's ready with the Exo to go for that play. Menu Ping still cutting off their movement though. They have a good ward watching Fly's positioning. And all they want now is to just give VT Faded that build up. Give him the farm space he needs in the jungle. Secure your deuce of space on the map. And that's exactly what they want. They don't know, they, they'll surrender the top tier one as long as VT Faded gets the farm. They're happy, but Talon has a good ward watching that top jungle, Mike. So they know exactly where the deuce is at. They could immediately go for a play if they want to after taking this top tier one. Absolutely. But now there'll be no defense to come out here from Ragdoll. They're just going to have to let this one go. Of course, next objective for Talon will be into that mid tier one tower, and that's the big one. Once you take that mid tier one down, it's when things become infinitely harder for VT Faded. For now, he will relish in his own jungle, but see how long that lasts as KP. Again, in two minutes, should have another exorcism and should be ready to try and rotate mid. In the meantime, though, you do see Ragdoll slowly pressuring that mid-tier one tower themselves with their Necrophos. And I suppose that is one thing you can do to try and negate that, uh, that tier one rush in two. Problem is, Makoto is still going to be around on the Ember to make sure this does remain defended, but it does seem like he can't necessarily take too much damage here from Citrus's. well it's still a Necrophos and he does have Menu Ping right behind him on the line just in case. So Makoto has actually managed to out XP uh, Citrus here on the Necro so still great news here for Talon. They do start moving up into that dire jungle looking around for this Medusa. Instead though they'll just take over the jungle. And this is just what you need to do. Every Dusa game you just take the jungle off it because very frustrating for VT Faded. He does rotate towards the top lane and take over that instead. We'll see if they can smother him though. For now, I think VT Faded's fine. He backs off at the right moment. He already cleared out the camp, so he's not missing out on the farm. 
and that's forcing a lot of heroes up top freeing up some space for gy to find some initial farm he's working towards his blink on the mars as well here mike and that's where tinks can start popping off for so ragdoll once they more. have that way of setting up fights jumping in and initiating that's where they can start playing down bot though bit of a smoke play from mikado and hide we'll see if they can land the chains to get started hide he's not level six yet so you don't have the rolling thunder but they're gonna try anyway wraith fire blast is there from gabby but gy he drops a great Ooh. arena into an earth spike onto two heroes but they've taken nobody down yet gy is still running makoto he's going very deep for this kill he's not gonna get it either a great spear out gy finding the angle the ink swell will not land in time though and the Earth Spike, it was still on cooldown by Menu Ping, so he could not time it right. Very close call for both teams, but nobody ends up dying. Yeah, nobody ends up dying. That's a benefit to Ragdoll, because again, all that space bot. The VT Faded gets the farm top, and KP's keeping an eye on the Dusa, but it's Radiance very hard to see KP attack. finding that solo kill on Dusa, so VT Faded's still in a really good spot to keep farming. Same thing goes for Talon, you know, while all of that happens, Gabby's farming elsewhere is still building up, and they are trying to apply that pressure onto the mid. No turnaround or rotation yet from KP, but with the skeletons up, there has to be a response here from Ragdoll, and without the arena, it doesn't look like they can really get off a big team fight here. I'm actually quite shocked that they haven't rotated more over. It's just going to be VT faded and Minyu ping, but that's not going to be enough. They're trying to bring everyone down. They don't have arena to play with, though. It's a very hard team fight here for the side of Ragdoll, and that tier one's gone. It's a big, big issue now for Ragdolls. Another great Earth Spike is there from Menu Ping, but it just doesn't matter as Hyde gets the shield crash off and does land it. This is a big problem now for Ragdoll. You see how VT faded. He's trying to rush the stacks as soon as he possibly can, but Makoto, he's going to bully him straight away, right in with the DD rune, but you're just looking to take that farm away from VT faded. And that's exactly what Makoto does. Great shove in from the side of town. Again, they've got this really strong push that we saw from the draft. Like Raid King DP, towers just melt. Ragdoll has to be ready to respond. They are grouping up and running up now, but it is a bit late. Talon's already on their way out. They do have Arena ready to go from GY, but they still lack that initiation tool. No blink, no armlet for durability. They will try to kind of pressure with Citrus, but we haven't really seen the effect of the Necrophos yet as well, Mike. We haven't seen the sites come out. We haven't seen the big plays for the Soulbind yet. So there are still tools Ragdoll have to reveal in the next few engagements. It, it's still all about the laying for VT Faded. He's still up there in net worth, number two, pretty far ahead of Gabby in comparison, like about 1k ahead of the Raid King. So you're still in a really good spot as this Dusa, but they have, they have to ensure that stays that way for at least 10 minutes. Maybe by the 20 minute mark, VT Faded is going to be set to go here. One of those weird things as well, right? Like, oh, double smoke out from Ragdoll. Don't worry about it. Nobody saw Ragdoll. Is there, uh, the smoke is three. This might be the time we finally get to see the, the Reaper Scythe being committed here by Citrus. By the way, John, don't think I, I didn't notice you called him Citrus just a, a minute ago. Very embarrassing, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, it's, that, it's that thing again. Like, I don't speak I English. I keep telling you this every time. Oh, bot lane, John. The spear does not land on Hyde, so he might have a way out now. Or maybe not. They're still waiting on the high ground. Ragdoll just being very patient, but no, Hi, he's read the movement. He knows. He lets them know about it as well. He is very well aware that they are around him right now, and again, it's a big loss for Ragdoll. It doesn't look so bad, but it's just buying so much time for the rest of Talon. And I suppose the only big positive is VT faded. He is still farming very, very well. I mean, in terms of net worth, he's still about 700 gold ahead of Gabby. And that's really all that matters right now for the side of Ragdoll. As long as VT Faded hits creeps, they're going to be happy. Yep, that's all that matters. Just get to do some big, hit those timings into the 20 minute mark. And they still lack a lot of catch. Like they need those blinks to come out on their Mars and on the Lion. Gee, uh, Menyo Ping still a ways off from hitting that spike as the Lion as well. It's a pause 5 line. Really hard to find that farm. They will pressure in the mid. Arsenal to get some good amount of damage in, and Talon aren't quite clumped up for the defense, but the creep wave does just melt to Mikado, so it looks like a one-man defense is enough. Still so, looking for aggression, Hyde. He, he's so annoying here on this pango, Hyde. He, he's doing a fantastic job, just constantly making four heroes follow him down, and they just can't kill him. He continues to get away every single time. And again, in the meantime, you look at top lane, John, that tier 2 tower, it's just not going to last very long at this rate. Another objective to slowly drop here thanks to the skeletons. As Ragdoll, they're just not interested. 
I mean, you've still got VT Fade at the top of the net worth board, so I suppose there's no reason for them to try and get aggressive here. They are still just hitting creeps. See if Gabby can try and keep up and catch up here on the on the Wraith King. But you might have to get to that point now as Talon where you might have to just really try and force more objectives. So, you know, those T1s dropping should have been impactful, but it just doesn't seem like it's quite enough yet. No, not quite. And you can see Talon right now kind of trying to trade. Top tier 2 is already pretty low. The mid will fall now as they have the numbers here on Raggle. So that opens up the bot jungle a little bit more. They can farm a little bit more forward. There are good defensive wards from Talon to watch that area. Top tier 2, there's still an opportunity for Ragdoll to defend that as well. I mean, Talon still has a tool to push. And they haven't used Exorcism in quite a long time after that top tier 1 push. They could just look to commit onto that top tier 2. No Fortify ready on Ragdoll as well. As that is down for about 4 minutes from the last time you used it to, to stop that tier 2 push. But if, if Talon find that top tier 2, they take outputs, they can go Roshan really fast. And that could align with the timings on Gabby. Gabby White, nice little blink out there, just realizing something was a little bit awry. It's back off at the right moment. I, I do agree with your point as well, John. I, I do feel like Exorcism being on call, off cooldown for this long is a little bit problematic, but it does feel like KP might be waiting for that level 12 mark just to use it, but now he might be forced to his fly. He'll use the Nightmare in KP. He'll start moving in, but who's the target? They'll try for Citrus with the BKB out. Citrus cannot do much about this. He needs help right now, and GY, he's going to jump in with the arena out, but is it going to be enough? It doesn't seem like it, because Hyde, he's been a real nuisance. Reaper Scythe is there, locking down too, but it's still done really nothing. They only got the reincarnation life of Citrus. He is still trying to run, still trying to get away, but it's not enough. He is going to drop, and now GY, he's trapped between a in a hard place he's gonna drop it'll be a three for nothing for the side of talon and all ragdoll got was the reincarnation life but that's not really uh not really too worth no definitely not that was a forced use of the reaper's sight out it's a pretty long cooldown to expend for that as well and it's from that movement we were just talking about, Mike. Take the top tier 2, take Outpost. This will open up Roshan. No early Desolator for Gabby, as he has went for just Blink Armlet straight into a BKB afterwards, understanding what he needs in this game is really just survivability in the front lines. So maybe they don't immediately go Roshan because they don't have the minus armor, they don't have the Exo as well to play with, but they've got control of that top jungle. This is going to shut down the farm of VT Faded by a significant amount. He's only got the triangle to really play in, maybe the bot jungle if he's feeling adventurous, but that's not very secure for Ragdoll, and then that causes a risk for Yudusa. Yudusa is still ahead by about 900 gold over Gabby, but that lead isn't enough for an item advantage, and that just means you're not stronger necessarily here. Uh, GY, I, I, I'm not sure what that was about from GY, but he kind of just ran right up to KP, and well, Fiend's Grip was there from Fly. I I suppose he was looking to push out that top lane, but he was just a bit too early to the party. Yeah, it's a pretty big kill for Talon to actually take, because the Mars is a big tool from Ragdoll, just stalling out his further timings. His armlet's still not done. He had to divert for that Blink Dagger. So it's not a very tanky Mars in the front lines when he does drop the arena. Uh, Ragdoll, I guess, in their minds, this is just space review for sure. That, that's all you can really take it as. It's all about the Deuce's scaling now, because it does feel like you might have missed out a little bit in the early timings of a Necrophos. And we do see Citrus uh, going for the Sanj into Citrus. the Kai Sanj now. Jonathan! Citrus! Citrus? Citrus. I don't it's... know anymore, dude. Well, what is a Citrus, John? Could you, can you give me a definition of what Citrus is? Isn't it a fruit? Isn't no! Like a type that, that's a Citrus, Jonathan. A Citrus! Then what's, a, then what's a citrus? There's no such thing it's, as a it's... citrus, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I mean, how many times have I had to do live English lessons for you, sir? You speak English many. better than Filipino, but you still can't get it right sometimes. You surprise me all the time, John, as we, we move in now, but oh, oh that's a great God. dodge by Makoto. Very, very nice. And that'll break the smoke up from Ragdoll. Just joking, by the way, John. I mean, I'm, I'm Australian. We don't even speak English, quite frankly. So don't, don't worry about it, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, I still get confused with a lot of words. You know, uh, you can see the problem with me, Mike. I can't speak Filipino well. I can't speak English well. I don't really speak well at all, do I? Can but you speak any as your analyst? No, not really, Mike. Still, we'll try to speak Dota here. <laughs> smoke, counter smoke out from town. They're going to look for the wraparound play. Uh, try to turn around a big target in sight. Citrus, as he is standing in the jungle. They've got vision over him with that ward as well. 
And they go. And Citrus, he does read the movement. I tell you, John, if you say Citrus one more time, I'm going to start saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, John. When it's uh, an I, it's a C. And when it's a Y, it's a Psi. You see? Uh, th that's just confusing me more, man. <laughs> that's that's just gonna be, that's gonna be on my mind the entire time. I, Are you saying it's heat? I, 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 I used to. No, we're not even talking about. Well, you know what? Never mind. Roshan's happening right now. In they go into the Roshan pin, and it doesn't seem like there's gonna be any kind of counter initiation here from Ragdoll. It's gonna let this one go to Talon, so a free Roshan going their way. Of course, first Roshan of the game, so no shards come out quite yet. But it won't matter. I mean, you're going to have three lives on Gabby or double life on Makoto. And it does seem like they do end up going the Makoto route as bot lane. They are going to lose that tier two bottom tower. But you'd have to call that very worth there for Talon. Is I don't think Ragdoll's even going to try and stick around for the outpost. They just do not feel confident. Yeah. They've got to back off. They've got to play it safe. They know there's potential there for a smoke rotation coming out from Talon. If they want to, really hard to burn down the Ember twice. It's already hard to kind of grip him down as well. I think this all boils down to the fact that Minyo Ping has not had a blink for quite a while. It does look like he is flying that blink out though in Mike. So this could be the turning point for Ragdoll. They've got stronger initiation now with the Arena and the blink Hex, the blink Earth Spike on top of it. I think Ragdoll should look to kind of play around that and they will smoke his four man here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And they go, GY, looking for the blink in, not going to be able to get it. Not quite the initiation they were hoping for here on Ragdoll, but they might just give it another crack. Problem is, with GY blinking like that, it does seem like Talon, they were very all aware, so they just back off. And they will not allow any form of punishment. I mean, we've only had seven kills in this game, believe it or not, John. 21 minutes in, it's been a very quiet one. And while all this is happening, BT faded. He is still top of the net worth board. That has not changed. This Medusa is still hitting creeps. But I dare say, once you hit the eye of Skadi timing, is around the time that you want to start grouping up as five and really going for the side of Ragdoll. But considering you are against an Aegis now, you're probably going to have to wait out that timing first. Yeah, you're going to have to be a little bit more patient here on the side of Ragdoll. Town, they know they're still strong. They smoke up his four Radiant this time. And they're going to look for that rotation out, look to maybe hammer in an enemy hero. They don't quite have the best forward vision here on Town. So it's a bit tough to find a target here. Oh, and you ping. He snuck around, so KP will run right into him. But he'll blink out. He should be just fine. Dyer. Scanning. Still having a look around though, Gabby, he does have that blink up, so he'd love to initiate with the Wraith Fire Blast. He won't be able to get that off either. But this is what you want to do, just take over the map, Talon. They're just very comfortable on this map one so far. Still a bit of a group up here from Ragdon. They might be willing to finally fight. Problem is, you haven't finished that Eye of Scardi yet on BT Faded. He's about 600 gold away from that. So you'd much rather just wait till he has it up if you can. But they don't want to lose that mid-T2 tower either. They've got to be prepared to try and defend. Still Talon, they're not going to force the issue anyway. They just want that triangle to themselves. And they'll get it. And of course in the meantime, Ragdoll, they're just kind of on standby. They're just standing by that T2 tower. Just waiting out until Talon do show themselves. And again, for now, they are just only really interested in occupying that triangle. You know what this is, Mike? It's a game of hide and seek. <laughs> That's what it is. They're just holding one place, God. you know? They don't want to be found out. At terrible. least Gabby takes the bot here one, you know? The skeletons are doing work. If no one else is going to push, the skeletons will do it, and Gabby will get that done by himself. 5k lead still stands for Talon. How have we gone 23 minutes with only 7 kills on board? I'm, I'm just baffled, because it feels like there's been... It feels like there's been a lot of action, but there really hasn't been, apparently. I feel like the meta has slowed down a bit, John, but we are going to have a bit of a smoke going on, so we'll hold that discussion for a bit later on, as Talon, they're looking to move in behind VT Faded. But you do tend to want to go for the support around him first before going for the main target, but in they move in, Talon, they'll have the vision in the tree line, so hide. he's going to go right after Menu Ping, and there goes your lion, just getting one shot there by Gabby as they lock him down, but is it going to be enough? They are still trapped, Citrus and VT Faded, they're back now, but KP, he'll keep going, and now the Fiend's Grip, it get cancelled off. They're by Fly, but they'll keep going in after GY they go. Reaper Scythe is out though. They've got KP down and they've got the first life off the side of Gabby. As now Gabby, he just blinks out of there. But a nice spear back on Fly. They found the Bane again. Makoto's going to keep the fight up at least for now as he still has the BKB. He'll find Yif and that'll be enough for him. 
He'll just TP out. And he's going to be just fine. But it is a successful defense here from Ragdoll. Yep, they managed to hold. That does end up being a two for three oh, in the end. Maybe uh, more. Three and Cole. Yeah, hide. Let's get fingered down. Menu ping able to find a solo pickoff on that lion. I suppose we'll make that a, a what was it, a, a, a four for four now, perhaps, or a, a three for five. A three for a three for three. I mean, uh, you did kill Mikado, but that was Aegis. You killed Gabby. That that was reincarnation. So you only really got two kills worth anything in trade for Ragdoll. Still a really successful set of fights. I don't think that's all too bad here for Ragdoll's end. As they hold on to the objective, they finally get their team fight going. They're, they're finally getting their combinations off as well. It's very tough for High to get big rolls out because of that soul bind. Like they've got to be really aware as to where Yif is if, if they don't manage to isolate that Grimstroke. Then their entire team fight's kind of thrown off. And we talked about that from Draft Mike. It does feel like Talon's relying a lot on the Pangolier to find the angle here to set up for the stuns, set up for Mikado's angle, set up for the silences from KP. And if he can't get that done with all the control and Ragdoll's end, then when it comes down to a big 5v5 brawl, Ragdoll does have superior control. That's something Talon has to be aware of. Ragdoll now feeling confident are on a smoke run themselves, but there's no one playing in that bot lane. Radiance no one really. Talons. Maybe they could catch out KP, but he's close to that tier 3 here, Mike. He is going to be a very hard target, but they are still making their way over. Nice scan out. He's actually going to find VT faded in that tree line, so they're going to know they are around there somewhere. KP, he does back off at the exact right moment. So they do at least get a deep observer ward down, and it does seem like they might slowly start committing to this tier 2 tower. No, they're just going to leave the illusions of VT faded for now. Not 100% committing whatsoever, as it looks like they are going to be forced to try and defend that top tier 3 tower anyway. They'll just leave that one be. And Talon, well, they're kind of controlling the Roshan area, but they'll go for a four-man smoke themselves now. See what they can get going. As Gabby, he does have the Desolator just picked up, so it's going to be even more damage coming out from this Wraith King. You know they want Menu Ping up first on that Lion, but he'll TP out immediately. In fact, everyone basically will on the side of Ragdoll. The only man left is going to be Yif, but he's also out of there. So neither side able to find each other on this map. And tell them they'll just run immediately towards the north side of the map. See if they can find anyone trying to farm that mid lane. Gabby, he is going to get the start off, but can they get the Rolling Thunder in time? They're going to rush forward with the chains there. Hide, he will land the stump, and now the Soulbind going to lock them oh. down. Earth Spike out. Are they going to be able to pull this one off? Talon, the double Reaper Scythe is there. Makoto and Hide are both gone. KP is still trying, but it's not looking great for the side of Talon. He needs out of their ASAP, but GY, he's on the chase, and now the arena's down. Still Gabby in the backside does at least find one as KP. He's going to get GY, but he is eventually going to drop. And Ragdoll, they win themselves another team fight, two for three, and that may mean a mid-tier two tower to drop. It's a big take for Ragdoll, opens up their push from VT Fade, it's now really big in comparison to Gabby. For Talon, that was a really awkward fight, they were fighting into the high ground, they start off once more with that Rolling Thunder, but the Soulbind again makes it impossible for High to control the rest of the team. Sure, they were keeping VT Faded in one spot with Rolling Thunder, he's not the problem. The problem is everyone else with the magic damage, with the control they have on hand, that's what Hyde has to hunt for, and he simply can't because of Ragdoll's positioning. So. Talon has got to find a way to deal with that Grimstroke, to have um, that Soulbind taken out of the equation by focusing on him first, going in and cleaning up afterwards. It's a lot easier said than done though, and Ragdoll's been playing really well in splitting up and ensuring when these fights break out they are moving together as a unit, because that's where their damage, that's where their punishment comes in. Their counter fight is really strong on Ragdoll's end, and again their 5v5 is a lot stronger. VT Faded, really big on the deuce now, has the Monkey King bar up, which is not typical on the deuces, but still really good damage coming through, really good attack speed as well, so he could just focus in and get the shots out. Alright, trying to get some D wards off on that high ground, but is going to have to back off immediately. Very scary times now for Talon as the net worth lead is down to 2k, and well again, VT Faded, he's been hitting creeps for a long time now, and is still 3k net worth ahead of Gabby. We just haven't seen this Medusa be threatened whatsoever yet. There's no real threat towards VT. Talon. Still back to the drawing board, still just trying to get more farm on Gabby. Working on towards that AC now, but... It's just such a big problem. If you can't kill the supports and move into that Medusa, 
you're just not going to win this, these team fights as Talon. I mean, that, that double reaper side, even if it doesn't directly kill you, is just so detrimental to the side of Talon. We've just seen it over and over again in team fights, just proving to be a real nuisance here for this Radiant team. Radiant and Ragdoll, I feel like the second Roshan is probably going to go their way, considering how these team fights have been breaking out. Yeah, they've got control of the area, they've got the wards in the area as well. They've got the AoE control to contest Roshan a lot stronger than Talon can. Again, the pressure for Talon's really not in Gabby. It's not even about the core-to-core -core matchup, it's about Hyde finding the backline. And if you can't just get the Rolling Thunder off, their, their entire team fight's just ruined. Oh, and they go Minyu Ping right in onto Fly, they just burst him down. But now a great Rolling Thunder. Soulbind will lock them down for a bit of GY. He's in with the arena, but BKBs have been popped by Talon. Can they pull off this fight? Hyde, he's gonna drop on KP, he's not gonna be so lucky either. He's gonna drop the VT Faded, and in they go for the Roshan. No buybacks on Hyde or KP. And that should be a very free Roshan to go the way of Ragdoll. It just goes back to that issue. We see Hyde jump in, we see him roll up. Soulbind's there. Suddenly, what do you do about the backline? You can't stop the supports. You immediately lost Fly as well. As we said, Mike, it's not a very easy Bane game because there's no one there to cop it for you. I mean, Hyde is counteracted by one spell, so he's very easy to control. The rest of the team can focus in on the Bane to prevent that grip from coming out. And without those two supports, the team fight just falls flat. Ragdoll playing really well around those weak points of Talon, just exploiting the fact that Talon's team fights need to go ver one very specific way, and they're just not allowing that. They've got a 2k lead on their side in Ragdoll, they've got the Aegis up and running. Uh, they, they've got everything they could basically ask for here, and VT Fade is just going for a BKB next. He knows that he doesn't need more damage, he doesn't really need much, he just needs to be able to stand there, stand and fight, not worry about the Rolling Thunder. The Grip might be able to come through, but again, it's a tough game for Fly to even just focus in on these BKB targets, because he just immediately melts. There's, there's just no solid frontliner here for Talon right now. Oh, there certainly isn't, John. There certainly is not as Ragdoll. They'll just keep going for that top tier 2 tower, and there's not really much in the way to stop them here from taking this very freely. In fact, they might even go for a defense play. In fact, they have Menu Ping. He's set up onto Gabby again, but Makoto, he's going to rush in with the BKB yard and just remnant right back out. He does have the Aghanim Scepter now. <laughs> So plenty of distance on those remnants, however, they found another target, and that's going to be Fly on the Bane. So a position 5 for a position 5 trade. Ragdoll, they won't be too upset about that. But they did not finish off the top tier 2, so that is going to be left, left standing here for the side of Talon. I don't think Ragdoll minds too much. They've, they know they've got a lot of time to take these objectives. Saving their own is higher priority because that will give Talon an opening to kind of play split push here. In the end, even the support trade sort of favors Ragdoll because that's a dieback on Fly. He's gone for a lot longer than Lion is. So there's a slight window where Ragdoll will have the numbers advantage if they want to pressure. They'll just go back to mid and wait. That tier 2 mid is already really low. Not going to take long for VT Faded to rip through once the creep waves up. And that'll only leave the top tier 2 to open up the high ground. Like you could go for the Mega Creep play, you could take out multiple racks with one shove in. Talon does have some high ground defense, again, mainly relying on Hyde, but it should be easier from the high ground for Fly to kind of get that grip angle. So we'll see if they do manage to work that out for the defense here. We go, tier 3 tower, gonna be short work here for VT faded. They're gonna have to try and defend this. I think VT will just keep going. Not really much in the way of stopping him. They are going to smoke up as four and try to get the initiation right. Again, they need the backlines first. They cannot go after the Medusa as the first target. There's just no way you win the team fight like that. So you see Gabby just rotating through the back, trying to find Menu Ping and if he can, the X isn't going to be dropped. So you see Menu Ping blinking in, but he's not finding the target he wanted as Gabby. Going to make the jump in now with the rate five blast. One hits him, but can they lock anyone else down with the rolling thunder? Maybe they can, but no, the stone gaze is going to petrify them up and Gabby. He'll get stunned in the arena. He's going to end up dropping. He does have reincarnation, but he needs to get the hell out of there. It's not a team fight here for Talon. It's never mind. He's jumped back in onto Yif. He does pick oh. off another support. They're going to lose Makoto. That's not what they wanted. Gabby, he finds an invis, and that might actually be enough to get him out and it does no detection available for ragdoll and that's gonna be enough they got the mid milli barracks and they'll be happy with that that's a big win for ragdoll talent again just 
struggling in these fights I and mean, they find the supports which are which is nice but i feel like they need to find the supports earlier in the fight like we already saw the soul bind out maybe no finger coming through but the control was already there from ragdoll to set up for the arena to set up for the big gaze coming out from the defeated they need to be able to hunt that backline a lot faster. I think Ragdoll's positioning has just been way too good. They've been really protective of those backline supports. And, you know, uh, Manuel Ping and Yif have been on point with when they choose to show up in these fights as well. So there's a lot of discipline from Ragdoll to ensure that they always have the tools to take these fights. They'll just immediately smoke up. They've still got the Aegis running for about a minute. They're going to look to take out that top tier too and maybe look for a couple of kills if Talon does opt to defend outside her high ground. We'll see if they can. So a very hard ask. Even just trying to defend their high ground is, is such a hard ask right now for Talon. Dragdoll. Into the tier 2 top they go, but in the mid lane they've gotten started already. But no, a nice nightmare out from Fly. It does temporarily save Hyde. But in the end, Hyde, he still ends up dropping. And that's going to make it a 4v5 into this high ground defense for Talon. Ragdoll might be very, very confident now. They've still got 15 seconds for that Aegis to expire. So they should at least have time for the tier 3. Even with the Aegis though, or rather without it, I doubt they back off. In fact, never mind, they are going to back off. They'll play it very safe here, Ragdoll. There goes your Aegis. So VT faded, he does not want to take any risks whatsoever. He might just wait out the third Aegis now before he tries going high ground. Yep. And there was some good split push coming out from Gabby as well. She cleared out the bot tier 2. So there's a little bit more pressure in that bot lane. There's a chance for a split push now for Talon on two lanes, top and bot. And they can kind of try to get some space going that way. They've got the full nullifier up on Gabby. So Citrus is not fully protected by that ghost shrouding more. They've got a way of dispelling that and kind of handling the Necrophos if need be. I don't really feel like the Necrophos has been the big issue though. It feels like everyone else has really been, especially the supports. And it's still down to Menyo Ping and Yif having that uh, Hex, having that Soul bind as well to stop, hide, Nat. Those are still the two heroes who need to burst down, but we'll see if the tools that Talon have, if that's going to be enough for them to turn it. They are at the 6k deficit, Mike, but at this point in game, 37 minutes in, it's not the biggest gap in the world. Sure, that's still an item above for VT Favored in comparison to Gabby, but everyone else, all the other cores on Talon and Ragdoll are fairly even in farm. So they've all kind of got the same tools to play with outside of Dusa being really fat. And that does give Talon, again, still openings to play with, but it's certainly looking really good for Ragdoll. I and mean, they've got the Rax advantage, and they've got the momentum behind them. They've still got that great team fight and control. Talon still has to figure out a way to break that, Mike. That they do. I mean, what's Gabby building now? It goes into the swift blink. I mean, I feel like Gabby's doing a great job throughout these fights. It's not really up to him. Uh, to continue to just Radiant's try and find these tip, these pickoffs, but he has been at least finding Menu Ping and Yif every single fight that he can. Uh, Ragdoll just doing a fantastic job though of making sure that they kind of turtle together and not allow those openings too easily. Is now the sneak behind from Talon. Menu Ping again going to be there to break the smoke, but he does not want to be picked off right now. Gabby will see him very very soon, but G Y is there now to break the smoke. In fact, Inkswell is going to be out, but they do chain him up. Gabby, oh he blinks right in, but that's not going to work out for him! He gets speed up in the arena, that's first life gone already! KP now, even with the BKB up, he is not looking great as the Soulbind locks them down! They need a way to survive, but there's no surviving! Gabby and KP are gone! No buyback available! Oh, that was a very, very risky blink in! It does not pay off, John! No, I mean... Nat, Nat, that's Gabby right after buying that nullifier as well, so no buyback. It's going to open up pretty much the Mega Creeps push here for Ragdoll if they want to. Heck, maybe even Tier 4s if they're confident. And Talon, they don't have any tools left to play. Um, they will have Reincarnate back in the Raid King when he does respawn. No Exorcism available when KP does come back. So their options are severely limited in what they can do for the defense. And Ragdoll are looking good in kind of holding out in this first game, right? Like maybe a bit of a slower start. They were bleeding some kills. There was some early momentum from Talon with the push, but they didn't sustain that push long enough. There was still a lot of space for Faded and it is showing up here. So they're gonna be able to just shove in, get the Megas up. They can just keep playing. Like they don't need to back off. They could pressure for the end game. 
You love how consistent Ragdoll have been, right? Like, ever since the, the first minute of the game, we kept talking about all those objectives dropping so early, but BT faded. He just kind of stuck to the game plan, and so did the rest of Ragdoll. And that just worked out perfectly for them. As Talon, just in the end, couldn't find enough objectives to really make the high ground push that they needed. Now the Ancient is exposed. They're waiting on Gabby. KP, he'll jump in with the BKB. Yeah, he's going to try his best to delay him by time for his Wraith King. He is dropping very quickly, though, and he's going to go down as Namakoto in the backside. They're going to find Menu Ping. That's one, but GY's there. The Soulbind locks down Hyde and Makoto as well, and it looks like Hyde is going to drop a gap. Gabby Nell, he's going to jump in. The immediate spear out from GY, just locking him down into the Reaper's side. That's one life gone, but can he at least find another? So they are going to leave. They'll go back in after Medusa. BT faded. He was left behind, but he'll just man fight against oh the whole God. team. Look at this, John. Look at the damage output. They just call it. The confidence from BT faded to just stand his ground, knowing they could not fight him. Ragdoll, they are looking real good today, John. Oh, that they are, Mike. It was maybe a little bit closer than the last time Ragdoll and Town faced off in those open qualifiers. Um... It did go Talon's way a little bit early on, but they didn't have the massive network lead they really needed to sustain themselves over Adusa. And we, we saw it. We, we talked about it a lot in game. Like, VT Fade had just farmed out. You know, despite all that movement, despite all the pushing coming out from Talon, they never shut down Adusa. And when it came down to those fights, their lineup was just not geared for it. They had a Bane that just couldn't focus in to grip because Ragdoll had a lot of mobility with her own supports and with her own offlane or with a blink initiation they had. Whereas Talon, they were relying on Hyde to get a good roll up, but you already had Yif with a Grimstroke, with that Soulbind. So it's just very difficult for Talon to execute on those team fights the way they'd want to. I think Talon are going to have to look back at their draft, maybe make a couple of changes there. It just feels like when it comes down to how Ragdoll plays, they enjoy having that huge AOV control. They enjoy having a lot of ways to set up for themselves, whereas Talon really didn't have that. It was just way too reliant on fly and high to somehow find angles for a grip and roll that felt impossible in this game. Absolutely. I mean, a very, very kind of consistent game here from Ragdoll. And we'll see how they do pull off game number two, if they can against Talon. We are going to head to a short 10 minute break and of course run after that break we'll be back with game two between Talon Esports and of course Ragdoll.